Hi there sports fans, this is Kenny here once again with another quick uh, animation tutorial here. Uh, this time I've been asked to explain something about uh, focus, change in focus, and depth of field. Uh, now I actually trained as a photographer originally, so I don't have a problem with depth of field, but uh, a lot of people it needs to be explained. So what I've done is I've set up a scene here that may help. Uh, let's just load that scene. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Here we go. Okay, what we have here is a little Martian surface scene that I set up just to show what's going on here. Now, if you look at the scene, we've got Alan Hart's little R5 unit here, about 5 metres away. We've got my APC. Uh, it's about 45 metres away. And this uh, Space 1999 Eagle is a good 90 metres away from the camera. Now, uh... Focus and depth of field are interrelated, really, if you want to focus on one of these objects and blur the others, then uh, we need to know depth of field. What you get, depth of field is controlled in your camera here, under camera properties, but it isn't actually turned on unless we go into the render global section and turn on a certain amount of anti-aliasing. You must turn on at least 7 pass anti-aliasing or classic medium anti-aliasing. Okay, so we'll turn that on and that will allow us to get our depth of field. Okay, so what we would do here is uh, if we wanted to focus attention on the R5 unit here. I would set the distance to 5 meters so that the camera is focused on this point here. And what we have here is the lens f-stop. Uh, this is simulating the aperture of a camera. In your uh, big SLR cameras, they're one of the proper lenses, the aperture is the little iris thing in the inside the lens which stops up and down. That's why it's called f-stops. Uh, that increases or decreases the amount of light and the way the light enters the camera. This can get a bit confusing here. Small f-stop numbers uh, like the 4 that we see here, or 2, or 1.2, like you would get in a really fast camera. Uh, small numbers are large apertures. Okay? If you see f2 and f4, that will focus uh, really sharply on something and throw it in relief because there will be a very small depth of field and only a small part of the picture will be in focus. If I take this right now and uh, render this scene, what we'll get is the R5 unit in focus and then a couple of meters past that things start to go out of focus. So the objects in the background would be well out of focus and anything in the foreground would be well out of focus. So basically set the distance to the object that you want to throw into relief, set a small number, you'll see if you experiment, the smaller the number the, the greater the effect uh, and you'll be fine. In landscapes or anything like that, if we were want to play with the f-stop numbers, uh, we would put large numbers, f8, f16, f32, numbers like that, then much, much more depth of field, much more would be in focus. We'd have the R5 unit and the objects in the background in focus with a large enough aperture number. Okay? So if you think of it as that, the smaller the number, the smaller the depth of field. Larger the f-stop number, larger the depth of field although it actually means the hole in the camera is much smaller. But uh, don't worry about that. So what we'd have here is we would set our depth of field after we've set, as I say, you have to set your classic medium or whatever. Uh, set the distance to the object, which can be found by the grid here. As we can see, I have a 2 meter grid. And I could also, if I wished, uh, change the view. Sorry, here we go. Top view. And you can see I can get the distance no problem there. So in the camera view, if I render this now, what we'd get is the following. I've saved time here and I've pre-rendered some stuff. Uh, I don't know if this will show up in YouTube, but what the hell. This was rendered using that uh, those settings. In fact, I think I may have went to F2 on this. Uh, so you can see the R5 unit perfectly in focus. Yet in the background, the APC's going out of focus. The Eagle's well out of focus. Uh, so what we've done is we've basically focused the camera on the R5 unit and nothing else. It's thrown that in sharp relief against the blood background. Okay? Now, if we go back to the light wave, 
If I went into the depths of the field properties here, changed it to 45 and F2, and rendered it that, then, as you would expect, we get the following. R5 unit is now blurred, and the APC is in sharp relief, and there's only the slightest blurring starting on the uh, eagle. The effect lessens with the distance, basically. Uh, if you want to have a really blurred background and foreground, you have to be quite close to your object. At greater distances, the effect uh, spreads more, basically. So it would be very tough for me to throw the APC completely sharp and everything else blurred. It would take quite extreme settings and would look a little odd. Okay. Right, now that's the sort of manual way to do it. Uh, for animations, it would get more complex. What we'd have to do is create an envelope, as I showed you in the previous tutorial, for animating a flashing beacon. What I could do here is I could set the distance at uh, 5 meters. Uh, I can zoom in and out here. And I can scroll up and down. So I could set the distance at this keyframe to 5 meters. And then the camera could have zoom out to 45 meters later on. Anything like that, if I so wished. And that would work for uh, an animation. However, let me get rid of this envelope here by holding the shift key, pressing E. There is another way to do it, and that involves using a null object. So let's add a null object to our scene. And we'll call it focus target. And now we see it's in the distance. And I'll move that a bit closer just so you can see it. Here it comes. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to use a plugin that comes with Lightwave. Uh, so let's get into our image processing options here. Menu image processing. Now in here, we have image filters. And as you can see, we have one called Digital Confusion as well as other depth of field uh, ones we're playing with there. We'll do digital confusion just now. Okay, so I've added digital confusion. What I can do now is go into digital confusion and it gives me a load of options here. What the option we want is autofocus. If I now set this to focus on the focus target and set a somewhat less extreme f-stop, let's use our two again, we now have the focus controlled by me moving this object. So in a complex animation, if I wanted to uh, switch focus quite quickly or to various objects in a longer scene, I can now do it quite easily by just simply moving this object and rendering. One of the other pluses of this is that we do not need to go for such a high uh, render filter. We no longer need to go classic medium or at least seven pass. I can turn it down to 3 or 4, press render, so it will render more quickly. Because the digital confusion plugin is actually added at the end. It does its work at the end. So I would set my target here over the R5 unit, press render, and I will get a result like this. It's pretty much indistinguishable from the first one. R5 unit, sharp relief, everything else blurred as further you go. Not a problem. And what I then did was, I moved the target back to the eagle and rendered again. Same sentence, uh, three pass filter. You can see that the eagle, sharp, APC not quite so sharp, and the R5 unit completely blurred. So there you go, it's just a, another way to do it. The image results aren't quite as good because it's like a filter applied at the end. Uh, it's not as realistic as doing it with the manual method setting the camera which you could easily control with an envelope. But it does for more complex scenes, or if you're looking to save time, because the difference is not much. Uh, if you're looking to save time, you can use the null target, and you will be fine. You'll be able to animate that no problem, simply by moving your target to the object you want. Again, if you want to be accurate, go to the top view, and we can see exactly where our target is in the scene. So we'll know it's exactly on the APC, or exactly on the eagle. So there you go. That's just a quick tutorial on depth of field and moving focus targets and a couple of ways to control the focus in a scene. Photographers do it all the time with, uh, say, portrait settings. If you set portrait setting on your camera, what it does is chooses uh, the widest aperture it can, f2, 
F3, uh, F4, and what that does is basically blurs the background and puts the face of the person in focus, throws attention on the face. If you set your camera to landscape mode, what it does is it shuts down the aperture as far as it can, it can be F16 or more, and that will give you a huge depth of field for taking landscapes. So the mountains in the distance are fine, the fields in the foreground are fine, and any details in between are going to be sharp as well. Obviously it would take longer to render them. So there you go, that's the basics of focus and depth of field. Hope you enjoyed that. Cheers.